Hello everyone. In this week's video, I'd like to show you how to use a statistical software called Jamovi. And obviously, you need to have it installed on your computer before you can use it. So first, you need to go to their website, um, jamovi.org, to download the software. So open any web browser and type jamovi.org. Then it'll take you to their website. So we have uh, five menus up here. Um, you want to click download. And good thing about um, this website is that it automatically detects what kind of operating system your computer has. Um, so for mine, it is Windows. So it actually uh, recommend that I download one of these two. So um, the one on the right, 1.6.14, is the uh, most up-to-date version, whereas 1.2.27 is the most stable version. Um, you know, typically I actually use the most up-to-date version and you won't find um, much problem using the latest software. So I just click to download this. So it asks me where... Oh, so I just want to save this file. Yes, yeah, so save. Then the download starts. Right, depending upon your internet connection, um, it'll um, take a while. Um, so the size is like a 200 something megabytes. So it'll take between like a couple of minutes to, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, if it is not discussed, disconnected in the middle. And while it is downloading, um, because, you know, this is for Windows, but if you have... Um, you know, the MacBook or the iMac, um, you can actually download the proper version, the Mac OS version, to download and install it. Um, you have to uh, be, uh, be aware that the um, this is only working for the proper system, proper uh, Macintosh system, such as, you know, MacBook, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, or uh, the desktop version of uh, the Apple product. So what that means is that it's not going to install on the tablets. So um, iPad, iPad Pro, it's not going to install there. Okay. Uh, but if you have Chromebook, um, this even has the Chrome OS version. So you can actually download the Chrome version of Jamovi 2. I don't know if there's anyone running Linux system. But um, if you're running Linux, then you can also download the Linux version. So um, there's quite a lot of a variety um, for Jamovi, which is a very, very good thing. And okay, so the download is completed. So when download is completed, then you can just click this downloaded file to initiate the installation process. I click. And now it actually um, asks me if I if I want to allow this app um, to install because this is uh, coming from unknown publisher. Uh, just ignore this message and say yes. And now you have this window. Um, so this is the um, the first window of the installation. So once you just click install, then it'll start the uh, the installation process. And again, depending upon you know how fast your system is, it may take um, more than a couple of minutes. So I'll just um, pause. The video 
until the end of the installation. Okay, so the installation is done. So it took me about three minutes. So uh, it should not take more than five minutes to complete the um, installation. So you just click finish. Then your installation is over. Now let's open uh, the installed program. Okay, so this is the uh, kind of a basic interface of Jamovi when you first open. Um, so let's just uh, take a look around um, the software. And before we do anything, if you just click on these three dots up here, then you can change the cosmetics and some of the, uh, the number outputs you can actually change. So I want to zoom it so that you can see this better. And you can change the number format. So SF meaning significance. So you can change the number of significant figures from three to five. And the P value. So uh, we're going to talk about this probability value later on. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, depending upon uh, the precision you want to have you can have three decimal places to 16 decimal places and by default it is set at five decimal places and the references um so whenever you run statistical analysis so um so we have to explain this first so we have um spreadsheet on the left side of jamovi and on the right, we have kind of a blank pane with a uh, you know, big Jamovi icon here. So this spreadsheet, this is where you type in your data or open the data. And you can run any of the analysis on top using these one of these uh, icons. So exploration, you can run descriptive analysis or exploratory data analysis, basically. And t-test is to um, compare two groups it, to see if there's any difference between these two groups. And ANOVA is used when you have more than two groups to compare. And the regression analysis. So this is, um, um, you know, when you try to uh, model the relationship between the two variables, if they are um, linearly related. Okay, and probably these four will be covered um, across CSB one and two, and um, hopefully. And so, uh, whatever analysis you run uh, using one of these uh, analysis menus, um, it'll actually show the result in real time on the right uh, window pane. So. Once you run, once you run one of those analysis, then it'll show you, uh, you know, how to cite this Jamovi software for publication. So that's what it is for the references, visible or hidden, because, you know, it'll show you if you choose to uh, be visible, then it, it, that, that Jamovi reference will be showing anytime you run the analysis. And syntax mode, if you tick this box, then it'll show you the syntax behind all these command, all this analysis command, which is based on um, more advanced statistical language called R. So that's a programmable um, statistical software. So if you're interested in, you might want to learn how to um, you know, do the coding in the R system. And plots, so they have a number of different themes and different color um, combinations. So um, you can choose minimal if you like um, SPSS. Um, so the SPSS is the uh, software that we typically use before you. So the previous CSB sessions actually run by SPSS. But um, from, you know, this cohort, um, I decided to use Jamovi because uh, SPSS has um, 
in a number of problems. And Hadley, Hadley is the founder of the R uh, language. So um, the Hadley is the, um, the, the style of the R. And color palette, you know, um, they have different uh, um, color combinations you can use for the visualization, you know, graphs and figures. Uh, you can just um, experiment this with yourself um, and choose whichever you like. Import um, default missings. So when you import the data set um, from like a different data format, such as Excel, um, sometimes you have missing data, right? So when um, the data file has missing data, then the default missing um, notation will be NA, not um, applicable or something like that. So whenever there's a missing data, it'll actually fill in with this sign, with this notation NA. And it has screen capture tool. So if you click this, um, then you will see this screenshot recorder. So um, you can actually record um, the activity that you do with Jamovi once you click this record button. And developer mode. Um, so this is just the only for you know who can actually um, who are involved with developing the software, so you don't have to worry about this. Right. So um, let's just uh, go back to this uh, spreadsheet. So this is uh, quite different from uh, how you do with Excel spreadsheet. Right. In Excel, you can actually mix up different data types. You can just type in any, anything, right? So say variable name. So typically, the first row is reserved for uh, the variable name. In fact, um, any statistical software is structured in a way that column represents each column represents variable whereas each row represents different samples, subjects, participants, data, okay? Um, so it is not really recommended or even not allowed to mix up different data types. So you cannot mix up text data with number, okay? I don't know if you notice when I type E, see the column heading. So the first three columns have um, you know, A, B, C as their column you know, headings or the variable names by default, but you can change this variable names um, any way you want. But if you just, so the type of um, the variable, right? It's determined by the first data you put into, right? So if you type text in the first um, in a row, then the data type for that column is determined um, regardless of whatever data that follow. So even if you um, put numbers down below, um, you know, this column is fixed to a text type of data. Um, so you're, uh, you're not allowed to mix up different data type. So let's just type this arbitrary numbers to okay. and now you want to change the name of this variable or you want to just name this variable uh, to uh, something meaningful to do so you can double click the column heading to reveal uh, the variable editor basically so here you want to name it as um, different name say variable right and if you want to so there's a um, kind of a, a restrictions how many characters uh, you can use to name a variable so if you want to have a more detailed description of the variable you can type that description down here and then measure type so that is very important as we learned from the previous trimester um, 
you know, you have to identify what kind of data you're dealing with, right? So that has to do with levels of measurement, right? And if you click this, uh, you know, down arrow, then it'll show you different options to choose from nominal, ordinal, continuous, and ID. So ID is really a nominal type of variable. So sometimes, um, you know, a data set has a column called subject ID or, you know, just ID um, to just assign unique number to each subject or sample data, right? So typically the numbers are assigned, but it is like, you know, your student ID too, right? It's just a... Um, um, just arbitrary number or characters to replace um, uh, the actual subject name to protect their anonymity or some sort, right? Um, but typically you wanna choose um, the level of measurement to match your data. So the nominal is basically the name, right? It's the names categories. Um, so that is the, uh, the nominal level of measurement. And ordinal, it has more information than the nominal level of measurement, even though the, the, the values of the ordinal level of a measurement are typically categorical. But these values have ordering information between uh, the values, right? So that you can actually sort them out in ascending or descending order. So that is the characteristic of the ordinal level of measurement. And finally, we have continuous level. So in Jamovi, um, the interval and the ratio level of measurements are combined as a single continuous level of measurement. But, uh, you know, there's, uh, so for um, interval and ratio level of measurement, uh, we know that we can do the proper mathematical operations between uh, the values of these levels of measurement, right? The only difference between the interval and ratio level of a measurement is that um, the ratio level of a measurement has the absolute zero point, absolute zero, representing the absence of the measurement, right? Um, such as uh, weight measured in kilogram. So zero kilogram represents the absence of mass, basically right so that is the that is, that is the example of um the ratio level of a measurement on the other hand <clears throat> temperature measured in celsius right that is an example of interval level of a measurement because even though it has a 0, 0.0 celsius but that does not represent the absence of temperature right it is just a middle point between negative versus positive Celsius. So, um, uh, it is very important that you assign proper level of measurement to uh, your data because um, depending upon the levels of measurement, the kind of statistics you can generate um, is different, right? So, for this, I'll just assign continuous and That'll do, so that is pretty much um, done with editing with the variable. Okay, so um, you can do the same um, operation by going, you know, data, right? And if you click set up, right, then it'll reveal the same editing window. So, um, this is kind of a basic interface of Jamovi. And next time, um, I'm going to show you how to run the exploratory data analysis using Jamovi.